Hello, it's Mark for GAK.co.uk and I'm here at Breakout Festival with Rich from Funeral for a Friend. Um, Rich, you've got an incredible guitar with you. Um, talk us through what it is. Uh, it's a custom shop streamer, obviously made by Warwick. Been a massive fan of Warwick for years, kind of remember sort of growing up and sort of playing on the metal scene when I was younger and all the kind of rich London bands had Warwick's. I was there with my horrific shitty little sort of 300 pound Ibanez and kind of wanted one so bad and kind of you know lusted after one I suppose and uh, I got a call from the guys of Warwick wanting to know you know would I endorse this stuff and obviously the first thing that came out of my mouth was hell yeah and uh, they offered me some uh, custom shop models so this is what I got. So one of the questions I've been asking people today is um, how they've kind of modified their guitars and the, you know, the, uh, the kind of mods they've been doing to stuff they've bought off the shelf. But obviously yeah. this is a different beast entirely because yeah, yeah, you've yeah. had it made for you. What did they allow you to kind of spec up? What options everything. did you have? It was completely everything. I could basically choose exactly what I wanted. So I went full on and uh, I'm a bit of a, so I suppose a geek with like tone woods. So I chose uh, Swamp Ash for the back which creates quite a, a, you know, a snappy tone. So, you know, when I'm digging in and stuff like that, it's, it's quite bright and snappy for the rocks sort of stuff. Then a bit of, uh, I you probably can't see it, purple heart in between. It's really subtle Just, because yeah, it's, yeah. it's not that far in terms of uh, looks wise, it's not that far from the top yeah. itself, but just real subtle, yeah. nice. Just nice and pretty. And then the Binga Pamel, which is quite a heavy sort of dense wood, which creates quite a lot of dark, deep mids. So they're kind of, the two different tone woods then kind of got the dark and the low mids from this and then the real snappy sort of highs from that which creates a really nice finger instrument so when I play with my fingers it's you know it's got a growl I suppose the typical Warwick growl but a bit more kind of rock orientated with the Swamp Bash. Sure what did you go for pickup wise? Uh, MEC I believe that MEC are the kind of typical Warwick sound they tend to be very kind of balanced let the kind of sounds of the woods through they tend not to uh, color the sound too much which is what I didn't want and just allow the, the bass to breathe, like, you know, allow the sound of the wood to come out, really. Definitely. Um, and in terms of it's through neck rather than bolt on? Yeah, it's through neck, so plenty of sustain. Um, ebony fretboard, brass frets, just really hard wearing. Same with the nut. And uh, yeah, just a big old EQ with the bass travel mids. Silver hardware. It's just, I've had this for uh, a couple of years now, it just it keeps going. Believe it or not, I flew to Australia with it, took it out of the case, and it was still in tune. That's truth. And That's that, quite a feat. That is truth. It came out of a coffin case, and I played it, and it was in tune, and I couldn't believe it, to be honest with you. And you were mentioning before that you'd just been to the Warwick factory for a bit of a factory tour. Yeah, yeah. What's the kind of production process and stuff like? It's absolutely mental, because uh, another thing that I absolutely loved about Warwick, and the reason I kind of like wanted to do a lot with them, was the fact that they're completely carbon neutral. and which is an amazing feat for a, you know, a profitable company. And, you know, I just thought, wow, that's amazing. But I never kind of, never thought much more of it. And obviously in, when I visited the factory and saw kind of what went on there, it was absolutely incredible. I mean, there was like no sawdust on the floor at all, which is amazing because you've got all these bases and, you know, they're being milled and, you know, they've, and I was that's like, where the hell's the sawdust? Like, and there was, nobody was wearing any apparatus, you know, breathing apparatus, it was completely clean. And I was just like, how is this possible? Basically what they do is they create, there's all vents in the ceiling and it creates a downward pressure and it pushes all the sawdust to the floor and then the sawdust is cleaned out and taken to another part of the factory which is then burnt which fuels the factory. So that's that, that coupled with solar power is what fuels and gives the energy to the factory. That's incredible. I didn't so know that about the Warwick factory at all. It's absolutely insane. It's, it's the only 100% carbon neutral music manufacturer out there. So. Why would I play anything else? They're doing, you know, I've got a family and stuff, you know, they're doing their bit for the securing our future and the environment and stuff. What a company, like. Looking after the planet. Exactly, and they make great bases. <laughs> so, how about, um, about Ant-Wise? What, what are you plugging this into? Uh, Warwick again, actually. They uh, created a line, the Hellborg line, which is kind of like, um, it was basically no expense spared on a kind of really hi-fi sort of amp. I tend not to like the sort of big amp peg sort of uh, tube amps, I find them to be a bit slow, I don't know whether it's my, my brain or something, but you know when you're playing sort of fast lines and stuff like that, they tend to be a bit sort of sluggish, a bit saggy. And like, you, you know, you turn them up to a, a good volume to kind of compete with the guitars and then they tend to kind of swamp everything. But with the sort of Hellbog stuff, they're really warm sounding because they've got like big output transformers like tube amps, 
are they actually transistors? So they're very, very fast attacks the there, very bright. And like you can literally turn them up to a year being in volumes and they just never seem to kind of get in the way of anything. They're just always really hi-fi, crystal clear. And I they think that's what you want. Well, they kind of, I guess they kind of capture the values that Warwick have put in their bases, but exactly, on the amp side of things, exactly, just... Exactly, yeah. And they've got a, like one of the best DIs I've heard, you know, enough to rival, rival sorry, like Avalon and like those sort of ones. So, you know, for me, wherever I turn up, it's no worry, you know, just stick the DI in and away you go, like, and it sounds great. What do you have on the floor? Any pedals at all? Yeah, uh, I absolutely love Black Star stuff. So what I tend to do is I run two signal paths. Uh, one into a black star which goes into my 2x12 which is like very mid heavy very kind of distorted and then i have another signal there which goes through an mxr with a slightly scooped sort of sound into a 2x15 so you kind of it's kind of like a little bit like a bi amp sort of system sure but um not quite so you know kind of quite a mid heavy sound quite a scooped sort of bassy sound that you blend them together and you've just got a really nice sort of overdriven tone like a you know, natural overdriven tone Anything a bit more out there? You got any modulation or delay going on? Yeah, Blackstar again. I actually like the HD modulation, and the reason for that is it's got a saturation switch. When if you actually turn that on full, there uh, it's, the tube starts obviously reacting to your dynamics, sure. and uh, it's got like a, a vintage phaser, I think it is on it. And uh, depending on how much you kind of dig in and how much the tube reacts, you can kind of control it. So you can kind of get like a weird kind of pulsing kind of like effect it's really weird I'd have to, I'd have to play it to explain it <laughs> well it's almost it almost sounds like um, you know the origin of phasing which is from old tape machines and yeah, essentially yeah. part of that is driving the front end and getting that yeah, saturation yeah. so but I kind of I've experimented with effects with the bass before but never anything has kind of ever grabbed me but it's something that the valve is doing to the sound which really complements the bass and maybe how I play and stuff and I can really kind of just get like really interesting effects out of it so and it's multi effects you've got like choruses and stuff on it as well which sound absolutely fantastic so yeah there we go bass player try a HD modulation well, we've be just become with. a black star dealer and we're finding that just we're getting so much positive feedback from it and just people loving the brand and loving the stuff that they do yeah. um, it's a real strong strong it brand is, yeah. well it's a British brand you know and they know what they're doing they used to work for Marshall and the thing I really like about the, the HD drive that I use for the overdrive it's weird it's, it's almost like I've got an amp at my feet it's crazy it sounds natural it sounds like I've literally just fired up a Marshall next to me and that's going as well so yeah, they're wonder wonderful pedals, like, and they're real valve pedals. You know, you have to power them with, I think it's 22 volts, yeah. which means that it, the valve is doing its job. It's not just a gimmick or, you know, a fake. It's not, it's not just a light bulb. Yeah, yeah, basically, oh, look, a, par a posh light bulb. It actually works, like, you know, so, yeah, they're great, great pedals. Amazing. Well, thanks for speaking to us today. Uh, the bass is awesome, uh, and it sounds like the amp setup's pretty spectacular as well. Yeah, so. yeah. Bit, a bit busy. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder whether I should just keep it simple, but I'm a bit of a... Bit of a gear tech knob. <laughs> That's all we like. Well, thanks for speaking to us. Have a good rest of the festival. Thanks very much. Cheers. Take care.